My name is Xavier, and welcome to a data tap brought to you by Freytag's Fancy Fellas. So we got a few things to note here. Number one, everyone on this squad except for Macronova is below a sergeant. This is gonna equal six promotions from Trial by Fire. The Trial by Fire really pulling its weight here. This is fantastic. Also, Couple things I need to blow money on that I just got from the black market. Number one, laser lance. Number two, laser lance. Number three, laser pistol. Number four. What was the fourth thing actually? I wanted to buy some ammo. It looks like I can't afford it. I only have five dollars left. Alright. Let's do this then. Let's get in here and no, that's not that's Macronova. Let's switch swap out to Mitch's and Juan's guns for laser versions. That'll be a huge upgrade to the both of them. Uh, also, we'll finally give Mitch that pistol he's been talking about for many, many, many whiles. Wow, we only have one regular stock. We don't have any more better stock. No, we have an advanced stock. There we go. Mitch can have that because he has death from above. Uh, and then we'll do the autoloader sugar. I need some more scopes and stuff like that, but for now we'll be fine with this. Uh, give Mitch the actual better gun. Also, Mitch has four HP and that kind of worries me. And I'm also out of that armor, so let's go blow that last few dollars that I have left on one nanoscale vest. I'm gonna try to talk really quick to get through this. Uh, so Juan, rip this stuff off, toss this on, good. Let's do a bit of the old, where'd you go? Here you go. Uh, let's give you some whatever you had before. I don't even know what it was. It had to be a stock for sure, advanced autoloader, sure. And uh, expanded magazine, sure. And then we'll give Mitch this thing over there. Did I give him the pistol? Yes, I did. And I think we're good. This squad is really built. Oh, also, I forgot one very important thing. We have the brand new Jay Darkman. God, imagine, imagine Jay Darkman's cleaning bill at the laundromat. Just think about how much money he's gonna have to spend getting these things clean every single mission. That's gonna be absurd. XCOM will likely go broke, but they're gonna go broke in style, and that's what's important. I'm gonna do the same things I always do with people who have very high aim and low mobility. We're gonna go sapper, center mass, and then give him some pistols in the near future. He's a great tank, high dodge, high health will make him like a, a guy who can run out, take a hit, shoot a pistol, uh, maybe bounce a shot off of his awesome wrist armor there. Uh, and otherwise, let's give him that side, not side, the will thing, the 12 will, because he's the new guy. Up to 56 will, we don't want any panics if we can avoid it, and those those numbers don't sound like much, but they're actually a huge help in resisting panics. A huge, huge, huge help. Like 20% more chance to resist a panic right there. And last but not least, I am going to replace Freytag's 5 hacking. Uh, and we're just going to delete that and override it with this 12 hacking, because he's going to be a hacking extraordinaire. 92 hacking, he doesn't even have a good drone yet. That is absurdity. Alright, three minutes of talking before the mission. Unfortunately, but I feel like we're ready to roll. Sky Ranger deployed. All right, here's the plan. There's a uh, very light force here. That's up to 12 enemies. There's probably a full 12 enemies. This is a pretty big map. Where am I? Am I in the top corner here? Okay, it's possible enemies could be here. I doubt it. Uh, let's let's just think that so there are usually two enemies uh, or one enemy pod somewhere back here on the opposite side of the map. They could be here. They could be there. I'm not really sure. Then there's two pods usually at opposite sides. So I'm gonna guess there's a pod here-ish. Someplace, maybe up in the in the building upstairs. I don't know and another pod over there So what's the best thing to do? Well, I want to get towards the rebels here We only have three of them and I want to defend them and probably the best place to do that is from this building here We get our sharpshooters up there. We can shoot across the vast majority of the map Unfortunately, we do have these high cover uh, gas stations here that will block some line of sight But that's gonna be the plan. So let's bring Christine out as far as we can get her. Confirmed. Zoom out while we run to see- Oh, there we go! Yep, 100%! Wow, that is a pod, though. Triple sectoids and a snake? That's 40 HP worth of stuff. That's gonna be kinda dicey. So, what do we actually have line of sight on? Just the one sectoid? I'm pretty sure we're not gonna be able to shoot any of them because this high cover car is blocking. Let's see if Juan, wherever he is, has a shot. Mitch has no shot. Juan has no shot. What? <laughs> This is actually really, really less than ideal, especially because they start in yellow alert. I kind of want to kill them exactly where they are. Hmm. If they can't, if, 
I wonder if I can actually use this to my advantage here by throwing a grenade right on top of all of them with Jay Darkman as his campaign debut mopping something up with Victor maybe commanding Victor to mop another thing up seems very unlikely that all of these things are gonna pan out the way that I want uh, so I guess the alternative then is we set up for an overwatch and we throw a smoke and we cover everybody So let's do that. Let's get the Mitch someplace. We know he can shoot I don't think we can actually get on the roof. Yeah going on the roof is gonna activate That sucks so much for my death from above strat if I come back here There's a half decent chance. We'll activate another pod back there So we don't want to do that. Let's move Mitch up to this spot there Make sure we don't activate anything. We're good. Let's also bring Juan to a place where he has half decent uh, lines of sight That's gonna be right here Unfortunately, neither one of the- oh, Juan does have a shot there. Interesting. I could command him to do that, but probably not a good idea. Let's go double steady on both the snipers. Because everything's on alert, I want to make sure that Slate- where is Slate? Here he is. I want to make sure that Slate has good, good vision and line of sight to everything. Uh, he can shut down two of their reaction shots by hitting them with Sentinel. Probably here's the best place I can do that. Unfortunately, I would like to move one extra tile, but god, he is a slow poke if ever I've seen one. Here is dicey. Here he might be able to see through the window. Let's, uh, you know what, I think he'll have better odds of hitting something from back here even though he's like one tile further back. So we'll put him right there. Uh, Jay Darkman, let's bring him... I guess, I, I wanna make sure I don't activate. Let's grab Christine and come up on this roof back here. Moving. We shouldn't activate doing that. And we should get better line of sights on everything. Okay, now we see all four of them, and we can confirm that coming up here is not going to activate anything. We'll put him there. Macronova would activate there. He would activate pretty much anywhere. We don't have to worry about line of sight. We can move right in there with Macronova. And this leaves Victor, who we just want to get as close as possible to run and gun next turn. This is good. Slate, Overwatch. Freytag. We can't go upstairs, but we can at least come in here. Somehow that's not going to activate. Going up there actually also doesn't activate. Very surprising. But what if... Yeah, these things are probably going to go towards the objective. So this is this is a fine place for Freytag to be. Let's do that. We'll toss him up on Overwatch. Ooh, what's this? A hacky hack. Small intel cache. Deception. Is that the one that gives me control of something? Map alerts are relevant. Actually, I could do that right now because we don't have concealment. Uh, but I'm not going to because I think Overwatch to hit one of them to deny them reaction shots is a better a better plan for right now. Oh wait, I wanted to use his smoke. Whoops, forgot about that. That's what I actually should have done. But my mistake. I'll have to use Macronova's smoke instead. So we'll toss that like right here. This is most of the squad that's exposed. Except for Macronova himself who's behind high cover. And also Freytag who is behind high cover. And make sure this does, this does indeed hit everyone. Yes it does. Looks good. Awesome. I do like that free smoke grenade. Now, here's always my big issue. What the heck do I do with the rebels? So, there's a window here. This is a whole wall with no line of sight. There's almost certainly, if there's a pod there, there's gonna be a pod here, and there's gonna be a pod, like, down here. That's just from experience. Uh, I know these things, or I think I know these things, rather. So, I'm not too worried about this pod. Well, you know, if this pod moves up and sees us, activates, move over here, shoots the rebels in the back. Very dicey things could ensue. It's also, I don't think there's any chance of the other pod being over here. Because this one was right there. I mean, again, I could be wrong. It just feels like that from experience that they're always on the far, far, far side. And this is a high cover wall with no windows. So I feel as though if I bring all my rebels right up to here, we won't activate. And it's very likely that we won't get shot in the back either. So let's do that. And I'll actually leave this one here because he has double high cover on two directions. Wu Jing Ing. And we also have Zedong Wang and Ali Reza Sarwar. Awesome. Let's go Overwatch, Overwatch, Overwatch. And that's it. Let's see if it works out. Come on, friends. Come say hello. Slate wants to greet you cordially. Wow. That looks so nice. Look at that color. It looks really... Sometimes this game looks really, really amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Amazing. Freytag, swing and a miss. And that's really it. They didn't do anything with their life. Why the heck... So the way reaction shots work on the Legend is a 38% chance and everyone that takes a shot, it goes down by 5% on the next one. I guess it works that way on, you know, all the difficulties, except that Legend starts at 38%. So we just must have rolled like a 62 four times in a row or something. Uh, and none of them got a single reaction shot. That's strange. 
But, you know, whatever. Sometimes that works that way. So we do have a couple studies here. Juan, we have a 64 on Snake, 62. Can I move Christine out of here? Or is she currently spotted? She is if she goes anywhere. She actually can come all the way back here, though, and slice and a dice this snake and probably execute it. And considering how easy I think this mission's gonna be, I am not opposed to her doing that. Let's use the body shield, though, on this sectoid, just in case we don't kill it. Nothing is on Overwatch. And I want to see if we activate doing this, so I'm gonna open up by doing this. 81% all the way across that. Unfortunately, I can't quite move out to get Lone Wolf because she won't have the extra movement range from dashing to complete the slash, I believe. So we're gonna forgo Lone Wolf, 81%. You know what? Never mind. Let's toss up Hollow Target first with Juan. Make that a 91. I don't know how Hollow Targeting works with the sword, but regardless, there we go. Uh, and then let's go see if we activate with Christine. We'll give up the concealment. I don't think we need it so much on a very light mission. It probably shouldn't be too bad. And we'll stay in the back. Uh, just in case... I don't know. It probably makes... You know what? I have no idea. Let's just go from here. 91. Sure, it looks good. Welcome to the squad as a shinobi, a Christine. Please slice and dice in true Johnny Maple style. That is not Johnny Maple style. What even was that? How how was that even a possible damage result from her? I didn't I didn't look at the thing close enough. I thought it said like the whole bar, but I don't know. I probably should have paid more attention. Regardless, Juan, oh, why are these things all gray all of a sudden for no reason? Who knows? We have a 74 over there. He's probably the best bet to take that out. Do we care about these things? He does hit like a truck, but sectoids are kind of doofers. And there's... Who else could kill that snake easily? Answer? Not really anyone. Juan, I feel, is the best bet. All right, Juan, 74% snake murder. <laughs> Great. Ooh, double Illyrium course. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Now the question is, what can Mitch 57, 57, 45? Wow. That's horrendous. Okay. Well, with that being the case, I'm pretty sure Makarnova can kill one of these doofers. Victor can kill another one, or maybe, I'm not really sure, neither one of them needs running guns to do this. And the last one, we can probably move really close with, like, well, Slate can't even move really close, to be honest. He can't really move anywhere. But he can flashbang, so I think we'll be okay. Alright, so let's do it this way then. Macronova, come over here, greet this no sectoid uh, very, very, very cordially with a little thing I like to call... I'm not sure yet. Point blank. Eh, 85% to crit, though. But there's still a chance to mineral. Hmm. Let's do this. Let's guarantee that this doesn't get screwed up. Let's bring Victor up here to this... Do this. this doofer. Let's see what the odds of him critting are. They're 100%. He still has a decent chance to not kill it, though. I was thinking whether or not do I need to use Frey Tags, um, what's it called? Get some, and the answer is I don't believe that I do. So, Macronova, let's just risk it point blank. By which I mean point blank. Damn! Ah, this freaking spec. Hit for six? What? What? So Macronova rolled a 15% non-crit. Good thing I didn't use the get some, right? Uh, and he also min-rolled. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Alright, Victor, 100%, 100%, execute! Okay. We're just not gonna kill any sectoids at all, it looks like. We will crit, but only for nine. Wow. This is surprisingly surprisingly really bad. I didn't think it would all work out this badly. All right, well, here's the plan then. The plan is I have no plan. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, Mitch, can you just kill one of these guys? Any one would be fine. Maybe that one, even the grays, should be good. Mitch, 57%, no death from above. Nope. Get it together. This is just painful. Like, everything is just painful. Huh. <sighs> well, can I flank anything with the rebels? Not even close. Not even remotely close. God, I wish they would stop even giving me control of those rebels. So, I think the plan here is Victor's gonna be exposed from this sectoid, no problem. Uh, let's toss up an aid protocol on Victor then, to prevent him from dying a horrific death. 
Let's toss up a command then on the Macronova. We'll give him a second time to, to attempt an 85% point blank. And let's see if he can not graze it this time. A Macronova. Point. Blank. I probably should have just used the SMG, but I wanted to say point blank, so. He's dead. That time he crits for who knows how much now. Very dicey maneuvers here. This sectoid, I think we're not gonna be able to deal with it in any in any way, shape, or form. Jay Darkman is God, I can't flank that one unless I come here and expose myself with Jay, which doesn't seem like Okay, that's it. Rebels. Ah, oh, you're so annoying. I hate I hate the rebels on this mission. Let's let's make sure all the rebels just go into Overwatch. Just go into Overwatch so I don't have to have the camera bounce around a four hundred times. All right, let's do this then. Let's have Slate pop up a aid protocol on a J Darkman. A J Darkman's debut is going to involve running into the open, giving of Sectoid a point blank flank against him. Who cares? And also 85% shooting a dude with a uh, SMG. Great, he's dead. I now have two people. Wow, elite laser sight and an advanced auto loader. That is crazy. Uh, I now have two people. Completely exposed to this sectoid with aid protocols at point blank range. I'm pretty sure the sectoid's just gonna shoot. I would love it if he ran away and did sign nonsense. So, what I'm gonna do is actually allow him to run away and do sign nonsense by not flashbanging him, and we'll toss Slate on Overwatch. Maybe we can do some red fog. Here comes a pod. Looks like they did see our rebels who are. One of them at least is exposed. That's a pod of four. We have a grenadier. Okay, rebel number two. No idea who these rebels are. I already forgot. I think that was Wu Jang over there. They all missed regardless. What happens with the sector? He does move. Slate, all you! You should have got an exposed shot there for six. Great. Sector's gonna turn around and shoot Victor point blank. Hit for one. All right. Well, not flawless anymore, but still. Oh, here it comes. That is 57% shot on my rebels. Swinging him. A miss, luckily. Ah! Graze for two. 47% there. Reaction shots are uh, scary. Okay then. Well, I really would have liked to have had people on elevation, but honestly it wouldn't have mattered because they're so far away. Do we even have line of sight with Juan and Mitch? Juan does not have line of sight, and neither does Mitch. Can Mitch get line of sight here on anything over there? Yes he can, but he's not going to have a flank on any of it, interestingly enough. Alright, let's do it regardless. We don't have any shots. Let's bring Mitch up here. If you say so. Um, I want to see if that was the only shot that he has. Yes, it is. Way over there. I could command him to take that one random shot, but really, it's the Rocketeer that worries me. And the, they are behind a car, and I do have a bunch of rebels who have minimal use here uh, for with guns. So why don't we try to do ye old throw grenades on their head and pray that it works? So Wu Jiang Ing, move on up, friends. Let's toss out ye old Granade number one. We'll hit both these guys and hopefully the back of this car. This. I hope that weakens it a bit. And the next one, oh, never mind. Just blow it right up. Nice, Wu Jiang, yes! Double, double murder. What a heroic hero. Wu Jiang is amazing. I cannot believe he blew up that car with a single grenade. Absolute absurdity, okay. Uh, now then, I have one flashbang here, and I have another flashbang. Let's move Ali up to the high cover. I'm really worried about these guys. We're not gonna be able to kill them this turn, but we can indeed flashbang them both. We'll do that. Hopefully they just sh don't shoot right through the wall through the flashbang, which is very possible. Uh, we have to find some way of executing this sectoid. Macrono is far enough away. I think he can do it with his SMG. We'll just bring him right up here. Seems doable. He'll get cover relative to most of the map. There's another pod, and it's almost certainly down there. Or Macronova, no more point blank. 94% SMG face. There we go. That's better. Wow, double Elyrium core. This is like Ludathon 2K11 or something. I don't know what the heck. Why is 2K11 a Ludathon? I don't know. Uh, at this point, though, I'm a little worried. It's... It's... I don't think it's possible the other pod is here. I think it's guaranteed that they're over here. So with that in mind, I am going to dash Christine all the way up here to this high cover. Get her ready to assist with something in there, maybe next turn, maybe with a command and an Oscar Mike. 
If I'm gonna go with a command on Oscar Mike, I need to get Freytag in position next turn that he can Oscar Mike, Christine. Let's move him up there and see if his command range oh, uh, eclipses her. Answer, nope, it's off by one tile. So if we want to do the command Oscar Mike thing, we need to move Freytag again. Let's do it. Uh, and we're not gonna do the command on Mitch then. Not that it matters, because he doesn't have any line of sight anyway. I'd like to come over here, but we're gonna activate that pot if I do, so let's instead come back here with Juan Pablo. We're gonna pull back, because I'm pretty sure whatever pot is over here is in their way towards the Rebels. Uh, and maybe we'll get lucky, and they'll come up here, and we'll get all kinds of shots against them from elevation with these three. Uh, meanwhile, Lamich, steady. God, I really wish I had Ever, Ever Vigilant right there with Slate. That would have been fantastic. He desperately needs it, because his mobility is so slow. Uh, meanwhile, Jay, please uh, get as close as possible. High cover, it looks good. Same deal, Victor. Close as possible. High cover, it looks good. Now, final rebel, Zedong Wang. What to do with you, friend? I could move out here, but then you're kind of exposed. Actually, you're technically flanked. I could move a lot of places, but they're scary. So my thought process here is... If we can't get any high cover and throw a grenade, why don't we fall back and keep him alive? I wish he had a smoke, actually, that's what I'd like to, like to do. And let's just hunker. Alright, let's see what they do. Two active guys, reinforcements are just close to being incoming. Here comes that pod I was talking about, all four of them, great. Another rocket's here. And, okay, so three troopers, or three advent and a drone. These two, while flashbang, through the high cover. 24%, surprisingly high odds, but still a miss. M2 Trooper, no! Ah, I it! 14%! Ugh, that is just, come on, I knew that was gonna happen. I ran up there and I thought to myself, even flashbang, even high cover, what the hell do they care? They're just gonna shoot right through it and kill my, kill my friendly McFriender. Ah, anyway. That's like super annoying. I hate losing people like that to really, really, really low odds, especially in this region where I have nothing. Speaking of having nothing, Mitch has no shot here, uh, but Juan does all the way across the map. The problem here is he has a negative 20 on his weapon range because he doesn't have death from above. Unfortunately, if Mitch were in this spot, Mitch would have plus 20 because death from above alleviates that. So that's not very good. Ele I mean, line of sight blockers are just, this is a terrible map. In hindsight, well, I guess once I knew that triple sectoid pod was there and they had all that HP, it probably would have made more sense to swing the whole squad over here, get better line of sight on everything else, and better, uh, like, just kill the smaller pods, because this pod has a lot less HP than the first pod that had 40, so it's probably my mistake for doing all this. Regardless, lesson not learned. Uh, let's do this. Let's find a place where I can use J to toss out a grenade and wipe all this nonsense shopping cart cover out. Unfortunately, we have to get rid of uh, the Overwatch. Victor does have lightning reflexes, though. So we could run and gun, like, right on up there. This is probably... Oh, that's actually high cover. And he'll be right next to that drone. Not sure where a smart place to go with him to run this is. He doesn't have too many options, it seems. So let's just pop the run and gun. It makes no difference where we go. We'll go right there. Fine. We can shoot the drone, we can shoot something else, who cares? No issues there, negative 19% chance to hit, okay. Uh, now, let's move Jay up as far as he can get. Like, let's say here to the left, he can lob a grenade up and over this vehicle. And that will expose a bunch of these guys. Alternatively, I could shoot the Rocketeer. Which honestly might be a better plan, because I've blown up that truck, I can take out the... The Rocketeer is the big issue. Rocketeers love to actually use their rockets now. So, my thoughts are, I don't want to let them use the rocket. So how else can I kill the Rocketeer? What can Christine slice? That's the question. This thing, no good. That thing shall be standing in the open, exposed. This thing would actually be a help. But then we just have to find a way to deal with this other M2 trooper, which quite frankly looks like... a scenario... You know what? Actually, what is her damage? We can do the Oscar Mike thing. Her damage is 7 to 9. I do, she might be able to do 8 to 10 on that guy. And then maybe we can finish that up... ...somehow... ...with Freytag getting a command or combat protocol through a window. No, none of that looks like it's happening. Makarnova, can you get a flank on that doofer over there? 
Nope, line of sight, high cover, it's just like threading needles here. No one can shoot anything anywhere. It's really awful. Alright, I thought about it, and here's the plan. A J Darkman, toss out, yield, grenade, numero uno, right on all this stuff, destroy all this cover, hit all these guys, that's great. You have sapper, should be fine. Welcome to the squad. Boom, first grenade of the campaign for you. Uh, next up, we're gonna actually grab Freytag. And I think the smart plan here is going to be to toss aid protocol up. Wait, before I do this, let me make sure I can I can command J like I want to. Of course I can. Okay, so forget the aid protocol. Let's just move up here with Freytag where we know we can hit J with the command. We'll do that. He does still have one more grenade. We're going to use it right now. I feel like we're going to have no issue whatsoever here destroying this grenadier with a, gren a sapper grenade on the vehicle. We can simultaneously shred the drone while we're at it, uh, and we can also destroy that grenadier. I hope, at least I hope, and that this sapper doesn't manage to blow up this truck. I'm pretty sure it will, though. If this, if this grenadier doesn't die and he gets a grenade off, I'm going to feel like a doofus. But he did! There we go, boom! Truck explosions always deal six, he's gone. Uh, now, that also softens up that doofus. Hey, wait a minute. Now Mitch has line of sight on this drone? Oh! So Mitch apparently couldn't shoot over like the- there was an arcade machine here in the back of the truck. He couldn't shoot over it. The drone was hiding behind it. And now that it's out of the way, Mitch has a 100% shot. Okay, Mitch, a murder! He's dead! No problem. Boom! Okay, that frees up Victor to do something else then. I wasn't even planning on that, but it's fine. I'll take it. I guess we can steady. I'm not sure if we're gonna get any real shots next turn. Uh, Juan has that horrendous shot down there. What do I want to do here with Victor? What are, what are his odds? 73, 64. What is his stuns though? 84, 73. That's not bad. Here's a question. Can I move Juan to a place where he can hollow target the M2 trooper over there? Yes, I can. I think I want to do that, and that's one way we can lock him down for sure. Then we just need to find some way to deal with this little doofer right there. Um, who else is left? Slate. God, I really wish he had ever vigilant. He could use it so much right now. Let's just dash him off. He's not going to be very much help way back there. My plan didn't work out for him really at all uh, in this particular mission. Victor, however, is no... The one thing that happened, though, with Victor is he's no longer behind the cover. The high cover. But these guys, they're kind of, uh, they're kind of locked down there. If I throw another flashbang on them. So let's do this. Zedong Wang. GoPro, full hero mode, right into the place you just saw your... Uh, what was that? Ali? You just saw Ali die and toss a flashbang on these two doofers <laughs> and pray that it doesn't happen to you two. Oh, that's gotta be a horrific experience to go through. Let's bring Juan all the way down here now. We'll give up his steadied shot that wasn't very good to begin with, and we'll toss a hollow target up, not on either one of them, but rather on this advanced trooper, because we definitely, definitely want to shut that guy down. He's probably the biggest threat right now, not the other guy with mostly red fog. And then let's toss a stun here with Victor. 83% advanced trooper. Please, Victor. Please don't miss. 17%. Nice. Good control all around. Now we just have Macronova, who's way too far away to be of use this particular turn. I think what we'll do with him is uh, just dash him, like, up here. This is where Ever Vigilant would actually be very useful on a engineer, or a ranger, rather, like this. But also, cl was it Close and Personal fighting with it now? Close and Personal, Ever Vigilant, I think it is. I mean, either one of them is pretty useful, to be honest. But let's bring Christine up here now to a place where she is apparently not flanked, but does that doesn't make sense to me. How the heck does this work? Here she's flanked, here she's not. But either way, she still has line of sight on this guy. That guy should be able to either see her and shoot or not. Not both. Let's bring her up there then, I guess. She'll have her back to these guys, which is a little, a little risky if they decide to move up. We're not too worried about it. Let's toss a body shield up on neither one of them. And, actually, 66%. Just in case, I guess we'll toss the body shield up there. And we'll take that 66. Uh, pray, six, wait, wait, 76 with Grace. Nice. Pray for one damage, and we got it. Perfect. Everything's locked down now. These two guys are flashbanged. They're probably not going to move up and shoot her in the back. Not even sure if they could technically do it. But they are going to take a shot now at Wu Jang Ying. Is that who it was? Nice! This guy. It's 12% this time around. Swing and a miss. Was it Wu Jang? Wu Jiang? I think it was. No, I think was he the one who shot? Let me get my rebels straight here. No, that's Wu Jiang. This is Zedong Wang! Right. Ying. Okay, hard to, hard to remember everything that's going on exactly. So, we have one Overwatch over there, which is a minor issue. We definitely want to pull that with Victor. Unfortunately, 
God, Victor could get all the way in there if we wanted to and probably execute one of those doofers, but to do that, we need to blow command. Wait, we already used all our commands, so we, we can't do that. Someone's got to kill that guy on the ground. As I recall, Juan here has very good odds to do that. 83% looks good. Let's do it, Juan. Cross map from Elevation. Boom. Did you not kill him, it looks like? Just a off. Yep, you grazed him. Sitting on the ground like a doofus. He just gets grazed. Slate, it's all you. Let's move you up into the high hey, cover like a, a whole two tiles. God, you have really bad mobility. 77%, 87% with graze. That's all we need. Just a little graze. He's dead. Great. Two guys remain here. And my question is, can we slice one of them? No. Could we with Oscar Mike? No. We still couldn't do it. So, what sense does it make to do anything but this? Let's have Victor run up as close as possible. Finally. He'll pull that Overwatch. The thing is flashbanged. He's got lightning reflexes. No chance of this hitting anything. We can now use his flashbang to lock them down a third and potentially final time. Uh, also, we probably want to get Christine in position where next turn she can okay. slice and dice right through them. Uh, which I'm guessing is something like this, but I don't want her to take any, any wounds, so we'll hunker with her. Meanwhile, Freytag, it probably makes sense for you. Can you airdrop? Uh, who is it? Airdrop... Jay. Where is Jay? He's right here. Good. And then with your second action, let's hack this thing for the small intel cache before I forget. A slow and steady mission. It hasn't been major excitement. It hasn't been, like, too many tongue twisters. Perfect. Awesome. No way to Anthony. Uh, but what it has been, has been relatively, relatively solid execution, all things considered. I mean, they did hit a 14% rebel, they did graze, uh, and Victor did lose 1 HP, but I think I'm okay with most of those things. Now, where can we bring Jay that next turn he can actually level the playing field? The answer, right here. They won't even see him, he'll be right in position to move out and do something. Uh, could you get, like, over here, Mac or uh, Mitch, rather? God, I can't even, this is so far away. I can't even see the squad site indicator. Who cares? Just rush up there and see if you can get a shot next turn. Who's left? Macronova. Let's come up here and grab the loot. Whatever you say. Probably don't even need to grab it. I think we'll win this before it's over. But another death perception and an emergency life support. And look at Macronova's mobility. He can get right up there. Great location. Awesome. And then what do we do with the rebels? We could, we could actually flashbang again. Let's bring uh, Zedong Wang out here. You know what, we could use Victor for something else if we wanted to. Let's bring Wu Jing Ing over there. Great. Ye old flash, third flashbang's a charm apparently. <laughs> this is ridiculous. These guys are just locked down in the corner. All game long. Zedong, 39% though. Don't let them bug out their cookies. Fine, 39% Zedong. Holy. Okay, hit for three, not even a graze. So I'm just a mineral, but still not bad. And I'm feeling like we don't need another flashbang here with Victor, so why don't we just hunker? He is wounded anyway, why risk like a 10% shot coming in and just executing them like it happened happened to um, Rebel, who I can't remember. Whoa, return fire, 18% graze in the high cover while standing in the open and flashbang. Good lord, these guys just don't quit. They don't quit with their hit. 42 and something else. Mitch really needs to work on his aim game here. It's not the best, but you know what we do have that is the best? It's called Jay Darkman. Let's move him one tile over where he won't pull the overwatch. Uh, thanks to his advanced grenade launcher, he can launch that right out. Wait a minute. What the heck is this now? What the heck? Is that an indestructible thing that I've never seen before? Or, or can he just not? He actually needed to move one tile closer in order to destroy that thing, unfortunately. Uh, that's not good. All right, well, let's focus it more on the one who's uh, more HP then. You couldn't have moved it anyway without pulling. I guess I could have moved Victor, but... Either way, there we go. Four and two, perfect. Thanks for not destroying the loot. Very much appreciated. How are we going to kill these two guys? Well, Zedong Wang is sitting here, terrified for his life. He just keeps getting... This is, like, so bad. Let's reload. Let's take this 29% shot. I think we've got it. Zedong! Nope. God, I really, really, really have difficulty believing that these guys are so good at staying alive. Juan actually has shots all the way back here. What I want to do with him is... I probably should have done this first. Let's hollow target both of them. Just like that. 
We won't even use his uh, third action. Actually, his third action we can steady for the reinforcements that are coming in at the end of this turn. And then let's see what Mitch can do over here. 52%, 44%. Mitch, let's do it. 52. Cross map. From Elevation. Ooh, you hit. Probably for like a, a Josh-style four damage graze. Not the best, but we'll take it regardless. Makarnova can easily kill any which one of them he won't. Actually, just that one, really. The other one's kind of in cover relative to almost everyone. Maybe Christine can take care of that. Do we need a body shield? Probably not. I think we, I think we've got this. Is there any place she can go to get Lone Wolf? Very unlikely. Uh, no. There's no place she can go to get Lone Wolf. Let's come over here then. 73%. Hopefully Christine can just graze for one. 83% with graze. So one little, one little slice. Nice. Uh, her debut has been okay. She hasn't missed horrifically, at least. She hasn't grazed. Expanded magazine, great. Macronova, would you like to finish up? Get right in this doofer's face, like right there. Let's save the point blank for the reinforcements. And 94%, 4-7, to 71% to crit. Holy Macronova, though. Boom. Awesome. Now then, the reinforcements are going to come drop in at the XCOM center point at the beginning of the turn, which I believe is going to be somewhere around here. And so, to deal with that, what we're going to do is put Slate someplace where he has line of sight on most of that area, like right here. And we'll toss him up on Overwatch. Uh, meanwhile, Freytag, let's move him a little bit closer to the rest of the squad in case we need to do something more useful. And then why don't we airdrop Jay again, since he's now out of the awesome grenades. And Victor didn't even do anything, but let's run him back, because we know the reinforcements are coming in from that location. Wu Jing, Wu Jing Ing over there, and that's it. That's the turn. So far, so good. This was actually for a 12, a very light mission, a little bit involved. More than I expected. Here comes four guys. I miscalculated slightly where they're going to drop, but not too slightly. I'm just hoping Slate still gets shots, because he hasn't done anything like this whole mission. Wow, is that double Rocketeer? G double Rocketeer? Double Gunner? Is that right? And Slate gets no shots. What? He, he, oh, because this stupid, I thought about that too. I was like, is that thing going to block line of sight? Nah, they're most likely going to drop right here. They don't always drop exactly, like they drop on a range around the XCOM center point when they were called. But all this being said, that's kind of a lot of HP to chew through with this whole squad. So, let's start off with uh, Mitch. What can Mitch do? 97% on that guy, and that's the best he has. All right, Mitch, all you, execution. Don't even worry about it. Yep, <laughs> one less Rocketeer to deal with. Juan, you have a 65. That's surprisingly high. You know what, though? Let's make that a little bit higher by grabbing Jay Darkman and doing what Jay Darkman does best, the leveling the playing field. We'll toss out one... Sapper grenade right there on that barrel, destroying all their cover and wounding both of them, softening them out quite a bit for Juan. Very good. Let's go back to Jay now, wherever the heck, or uh, Juan rather. Now he has a hundred percent on the heavy grenadier. That is fantastic. He's dead, just like that. Ooh. Wow, what happened to the cutscenes? They look so much cooler. Crit for twelve, also. Okay, now my big question is, is this guy gonna die or not? Let's find out by bringing Victor right in his face. You know what? Why even risk this? I have a 100% chance, a 100% chance to make sure he dies safely. Why risk a graze or something stupid? 90%, 100% then with graze. He's dead. Good job, Slate. Definitely need to get you ever vigilant so you can be far more useful. Uh, and then last but not least, what about this gunner? Do we want to? Do we want to risk it? Macronova's back there. Can Christine slice the gunner? Actually, believe it or not, somehow yes. Okay, um, but she'd get Lone Wolf if I move Macronova out of the way. So let's do that. We'll bring Macronova up here. Let's grab Christine again now, and we'll slice and a dice. Ninety-one percent. Finally, with Lone Wolf we're back across the map. Very good. Very good use of her. I think this this mission did a little. What? Wow. Okay. She did a little bit of scouting, a little bit of killing, a little bit of flanking. A uh, little bit of staying safe. All in all, very good. Okay, so we took one HP point of damage on Victor. That's um, acceptable, I suppose, given the Grey's like min roll a thon at the beginning against that huge pod. We did lose a rebel 
you know, on a 14% shot, but otherwise, very, very, very acceptable. To the Ooh, this is what I was looking for. Nine days on Victor, that's fine. But look at all of these promotions. Good God. Slate. Um, this is a good question with Slate. He's got very high hacking. I think I have to go Trojan. He just has he just has such high hacking for someone who's not even focused on hacking at all. Um, scanning protocol I've used extensively, and I feel like it's just still bad. It's earlier... It, it just needs more charges. It's just too situational and too annoying and finicky to really bother with, especially when Trojan is so good and he has such a high hack skill score. And we're not gonna go field medic because we're definitely going ever vigilant because he does have super high aim and super low mobility. Ergo, uh, I think medical protocol has diminishing returns without having field medic. So let's go Trojan. He'll be uh, he'll be the opposite of Vince, who is going medical field medic, and then. Freytag's going also Trojan airdrop. I like how my specialists are having their old individual perk trees flushing out or fleshing out for them. Juan, what do we do with you, friends? Oh, well, you're going rapid targeting, so high def hollow, no questions there. Mitch, you're up. Death from above, center mass, because center mass allows you to do more death from above. Damn good ground. Like, who needs more aim when you already have 4 million aim? Sounds good to me. Uh, Victor, you have super high mobility, but super low health, and this is like the second time you've actually been hit, and you almost died the first time. So just for thematic reasons, I'm not even going to consider anything other than Fortify. Let's try to keep Victor alive this campaign. That alone might be a challenge. Gray, Gray, why did I say Gray? How about J? Oh, I was looking at Grizzly, and then I said Gray for some reason. Wonderful. Wonderful the brain I have works somehow. And then... I'm gonna go formidable because, like I said before, wow, he he just uh, hidden potentialed a health point as well. Eight health. This guy is never gonna die. Jay Darkman is gonna be a tanking extraordinaire, and I'm gonna enjoy it uh, thoroughly. Ooh, Christine makes the promotion. Let's go as usual. Combatives. That's where I feel Shinobi's really open up. And Macronova, no promotion because he was already a sergeant. So and Freytag, of course, was the leader. Four Elitarium cores, elite laser sight, depth perception, ten intel. And all those promotions, that was a fantastic, fantastic result for us, all things considered. Now, there's something I meant to do in the last mission. I wrote myself a note. Actually, there's two things I wanted to do, uh, and I just didn't look at the notes. I, I never look at the notes. Number one, the armory. We have only one person, actually two people wounded now, Victor and myself. But honestly, I don't think it's worth having a scientist stationed in here in the AWC to heal us, the, just the two of us slower. Combat armor is 14 days. Let's pull this scientist out. And that's gonna drop combat armor to 12 days. Again, it's probably like rounding up or whatever, so I bet we just cut off almost three days there. Uh, we're gonna have a little bit longer on the two people. So we have 13 and 17, sure. So we gain five days there, but we get combat armor three days sooner. Also, at this point, I have three scientists. I didn't even realize that I had three. So it really, really, really makes a lot of sense to me to build a laboratory down here as soon as possible on the shielded power coil. Maximum power the laboratory is the finished. second most expensive building in the game power-wise, so it makes sense to put it on a power coil. Especially since I have no power anyway, so I couldn't build it anywhere else, but it's $150. God, I could basically double my scientists from three to six if I put that in. Although I need another, what is it like? What do you start with? One tube and then you have to buy all the rest? I think they're $50 a piece. So I'd really need kind of a lot of uh, supplies to make that happen, which I don't have. We'll get them eventually, but not right now. Still, though, that's that's high on my priority list, is getting that laboratory going. Uh, Jay Darkman, what do you have? Will to survive. Ooh, and Sprinter. Wow, and Clutch Shot. I want to give you all of these things. I don't know which one. Well, let's keep you alive first. We'll go for Will to survive. I just felt like since he has so much HP, he feels like he's going to be an awesome contributing character. Although, honestly, I'm not sure if it was smart to buy him or not for 60 supplies when I really need to get the laboratory up and running. Uh, and at this point... This is where I suffer from taking breaks between episodes. I completely forget what I was doing in the strategy layer. Did I want to sit here in New India and keep scanning for Lib 2? Was that my plan? Did I want to go somewhere else? Is New Indonesia, we have one thing queued up there. I think we hit this a few times recently, so vigilance is probably a little high there. Probably a little high in West Asia. I think we just did a couple things there. I think it's 
Didn't we just do a couple things in New India as well? I'm not sure. Probably makes sense to hit up Eastern Europe a little bit. But since I don't really want to do missions there, I might as well stay here in New India and try to search for Liberation 3, I suppose. That, or search for um, more jailbreaks. And I'm not sure, but first, let's hit the market really quick Avenger and see if I can actually course. make... Oh wait, there's that, uh, there's that UFO. Market is open. But let's see if I can make enough sales to start building the laboratory. Even if I could do it, I'm not sure if it's smart to do it though. God, data cache would be awesome. Because I kind of need the supplies to buy armor regardless. But at the same time, the sooner I get that laboratory up, the sooner I can get uh, mag weapons up. And also the autopsies, which allow me to do all the stuff in the proving ground, which I now have, and I have access to put two engineers in there to really speed it along as well. So... In order to get the laboratory, I would need $150. And to get that, I would have to sell so much stuff. I would have to sell the data cache, and I don't feel comfortable doing that. I would probably have done it if I didn't get this resistance contact. But since we can expand to East Africa, and I can get another resistance contact after that, I kind of feel like I want to save my intel, uh, just in case we do manage to get a Liberation 3 going somewhere, so I can expand somewhere else cheap, or even spending 200 intel to expand somewhere else, like over here or something, isn't the worst plan in the world. Plus, researching radio would also be a help, so we'll leave that alone for now. But while I'm here, I will sell just a couple of things. What was it? Um, let's sell two Illyrium cores. Actually, let's sell three. Just to have enough money so I can build some laser weapons if I need to. And then I think we're gonna hang out in New India. And I think we're gonna scan... Setting course for the Indian Regional Zone. I'm not sure how long for, though, because I don't want this resistance contact to go away. Didn't that, didn't that come up at the end of the last mission? Yeah, it did. And then I immediately did this one, so I have like seven days. So let's count on that like June like 22nd or so I have to have started that by. Ooh, what's this? Lib 3? Lib 3? Rescue an engineer, two days, 21 hours. Can't really do that at all. Uh, there's no safe way to do that with a very light mission. Not even with a solo shinobi or anything. It's not even worth the risk. Here's a Liberation 1, four days, one hour. Interesting mission, because this I can do. I could make it much easier with a boost. I could even under-infiltrate it. If I boosted it, I get the intel right back. So I think I do want to queue that up, but where the heck did that UFO go? If I queue this up... Um... Where did it go? I don't see it anywhere. Is, is there... there is a UFO, right? Am I, am I forgetting? Am I forgetting this? Haven, infiltrators, alien conditioning, defense, scopes... <laughs> okay, I guess there's no way to really know. Or to remember, unless you uh, watch someone play once a day and it's fresh in your mind. But yeah, let's go queue this up, or at least try to see what I can do with it. Setting course for I can only send four people anyway, so Asia. I think the Avenger defense, if we get it, will be fine. Alright, I thought about it and I'm gonna let it go, mostly because I don't have enough people to cover the Avenger defense if it does actually happen. It's unfortunate, because I could do it. Uh, I'd probably have to boost it, but it would be super easy. Uh, it's so close, but no cigar. Thank you, Avenger Defense. Thank you very much. And the scanning, we will go. Oh, there we go. Speaking of, I was very glad I didn't do that. Evasive maneuvers. Do a battle roll, Avenger. Do a battle roll. Uh, we did it. Okay, great. Well. Further sign of the pursuing UFO. There goes that uh, big challenging thingamabob. God, that would have been really annoying. Really annoying. Is, I, is it still 12 people? No new supplies coming in. One, two, three, four. I'm not sure if you can even send resources. people like this. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I only would have had ten. Um, I'm not even sure if I would have won that. That could have ended the campaign. But, truth be told, it's a pretty low odds. I think even on Legend, it's like 50-50 for those dark event spawned UFOs to intercept you. So they're not like, uh, I'm not even sure if it is 50. It might, might be less than that. It might have been increased to 50 at some point. I can't remember exactly. All I remember is that, who cares? 
Also, I can still do this mission. Well, yeah, I could still do this mission with a boost now. Huh, let's go gear it up. Okay. And here's the squad of Freytag's fancy fellas once again. Brought to you by Freytag, Christine, Macronova, and Wade Anthony. Very strong squad. We've only got four people on this. It's going to be extremely light, though, like eight enemies. However, this is a pretty good squad. Uh, however, there's one other thing I wanted to do before I launch, and it was give Wade Anthony depth perception. Or should I save it for someone like Mitch? I mean, it's a tough call. You know what? I'm going to save it for someone like Mitch. Uh, I don't know if it's a good idea or not. Also, Wade Anthony's super slow, so I don't think I'm going to give him any extra item. We do have one free smoke on Macronova, thanks to Smoker, which I did train. God, Robo Jumper made the best mod in the history of humanity here. You can actually see these perks. I kind of wish the officer perks were a different color, though, so you could see the AWC more clearly as opposed to the officer perks. Um, but other than that, this is the best mod of all time, except for Gachi again, which is really the best mod of all time. But let's, um, let's gear up. Macronova's items just slightly. So we have an advanced uh, advanced magazine. What about the suppressor? Do we want to change that out for something else more useful? Mm, I don't think he really needs it right now. Let's give him the advanced auto loader. Good, that brings us down from 106 to 104 with a boost. Just in case we need to shoot a lot with him. I mean, SMGs do round the animal pretty quickly. I think he'll be okay though. I kind of wish he had an AP round. And can I afford an AP round? I can. All right, let's do that then. We'll buy one of those. Macronova now has six HP. How the heck did he... Oh, right, because I gave him the armor a long time ago. Let's drop the med kit then for that. I kind of wish I had the smart macrophages for him. Because, I mean, you know, macrophages for Macronova. Plus, also, he could then move through, like, acid. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Did I ever finish the, um... How close am I to finishing the thingy? The thingamabobber. Build items. Armor with the hazmat vest. Oh wait, when I was in there, oh, that's interesting, you can see your event queue. I am 10 hours away from the hazmat vest, bloody hell. Well, I guess we're gonna have to forgo that. I would really like to give it to him because now the nanofiber plating, whatever the heck this thing is called, only gives two HP, nanoscale vest, and the hazmat gives three, uh, but it also gives immunity, so it's kind of like a combo nanoscale vest with medkit. That's really, really, really useful for this spec where you need mobility. And then I could give him something like extra mobility rather than the smart macrophages. Anyway, too much talking. This squad looks pretty good. It's hack a train uh, between Freytag and Christine. We have two options. Freytag can get line of sight and hack from range. Or Christi uh, Christine could run in and Freytag could command Oscar Mike and she could run all throughout the map, evac, etc, etc. Either way, we'll be fine with a boost and we're going to plan to boost this. Okay, so do we even have, um, let's, let's just deploy a bunch of people in advisor positions. Juan, you can go there. Uh, Eastern Europe. Need to recruit some more people. Slate. Wait, why did I only have... That data tap I did was in New India. Why did I only have three people guarding it when I had seven people assigned to defense? Did I have a ton of faceless? Do I have a ton of faceless in here? I thought, I thought because there was only three people guarding it, that was in Eastern Europe. Now I'm all confused. I would love to recruit some more people. I'm just gonna forget about the Haven Faceless thing. You know why I'm gonna forget about that? The f Faceless Infiltrators or whatever? Mostly because I am not getting any troop columns, and so running a bunch of rendezvous would be extremely beneficial in terms of, um, getting supply, or just getting corpses. Like, that's my only chance to get a, a corpse right now for a sectoid. I think I'm gonna scan this right now, because we're completely, I even if we found another mission, we couldn't even gear it up. So let's scan the, uh, whatever this is while we're waiting. Nice, not. All right, area suppression on uh, Dagar, great. You know what, let's toss him in down here. No reason not to, just for the time being. Keep scanning here. Ooh, there's my hazmat vest. Also, now that that's done, I'm pretty sure there's nothing else we can do in here for the time being. Yep, I would love to do talent rounds, I'd love to research more stuff so I could do more things, but there's nothing to be done. So, let's kick these guys out, you're out, you're out, and let's kick this guy out, you're out, and deploy him down here. Who is this? Sumkar Pushkar? Wait, Sumuk? Sumuk Pushkar, I think. Push, Pushkar. I hope. I don't know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do it right, but who knows. Oh! 
Hey, is that the... I don't think that's the first supply raid we've seen this campaign. Let's hope that it's something good. Two days, seven hours. Nope, not doing that. What's next, though? Three days, 14 hours. Free a prisoner, engineer, Artem. Artem Pavlov. Unfortunately, I'd have to boost that to get it, and I don't particularly need an engineer right now. I think we're ahead on that. So we have someone coming in here. More strength coming into New India. Meaning we can probably use uh, New India to scan for troop columns once this supply rate is done. I'm definitely not going to try to 0% that. Absolutely no way I can handle that right now with the, with the command pods in 1.3. That would just be almost certainly a squad wipe. So let's keep scanning this thing and pray for the best. Another mission. Three days, 15 hours. Ooh, a smashing grab. Unfortunately, we're not going to do that, because that's also going to be a higher strength in just a minute. I would love to gear it up, but we can't afford it. Looks like Danny's finally done with Jammer. That would be very useful on those, um, whatever those missions are, the Defend Haven Resistance ones. Awesome. Let's go back here, and who else can we promote? Just Mitch? I don't want to train Mitch to be an officer. God, I love how there's actually people. There's actually, wait a minute. Is that Freytag? Freytag's off infiltrating a mission, and it's showing him right here. I think that might be a bug. I never realized that. So if you're infiltrating a mission, you're still available to be... Sh and no one ever noticed, because without this mod showing uh, extra people in the Avenger... Is that Constantine? Constantine the bartender? <laughs> With no hat? What? He looks so weird. Constantine, put your hat on, you weirdo. Anyway, let's get back to uh, the game. Can't even remember what I was doing exactly. One day, 17 hours, hack workstation. That looks like Lib 1. We can't do it. We're doing any missions down here? No. So we don't have to worry about trying to do something right before the supply rate is done. Also, speaking of doing something before it's done, it looks like the dandy doofuses are ready for a jailbreak. We've got a rookie, a resistance personnel rookie, and resistance personnel, as I recall. And we are 100% infiltrated in a strength 1 region. This should be a pretty easy. So when's we returning? A jailbreak. That one I'll play a little bit more loosey-goosey and maybe have a bit more fun. This one I felt like I was, uh, I had to actually think quite a bit on this one. Even though it's only a 12-man data tap, it was pretty hard. Uh, yeah, but uh, when's we returning? This thing, until then. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Here comes that pod I was talking about, all four of them. Great, another Rocketeer. And, okay, so three troopers, or three advent and a drone. These two, while flashbang, through the high cover. 24%, surprisingly, high odds, but still a miss. M2 trooper, no! Ah, do 